शब्द बिना सारा जग अंदा काटे कौन मोका फंदा शब्द बिना सारा जग अंदा काटे कौन मोका फंदा शब्द बिना बेर था सब तंदा शब्द बिना बेर था सब तंदा शब्द बिना जीव बंधन बंदा शब्द बिना जीव बंधन बंदा Welcome seekers to today's spiritual satsang titled Half Initiation from a Master. I have with me Easter Asia's main speaker who is an advanced disciple of a perfect living master. In this episode, we will be talking about the meaning of half initiation and also the convenient method of meditation. Okay, main speaker, um I have a question. um with regards to initiation so from ishwar puri ji um he mentioned that great master gives uh, half initiation great master sawan singh gives half initiation to um young children who has not you know reached a certain age for full initiation and also another holy master supreme master ching hai um gives the convenient method um and she teaches this convenient method to um seekers who are, who have yet to um ready themselves for the full initiation so can you explain to the listeners what is half initiation and how it differs to full initiation okay since um uh, i'm get initiation from supreme master shing hai first then i gonna um explain about convenient method first so the convenient method is like half initiation but they in kuan yin group they just use different word but um they are standard of their practice is that they're going to teach you a basic meditation once you be able to keep a vegan diet for 6 months And, and I'm not sure about their update requirements, but at that time when I was uh, getting these convenient methods, it was that. So the meditation that they give to you is on the light. So is uh, like a teach meditation on the light meditation part. And then when you um, uh, practice these convenient methods. for another uh, two month three month and so on depend on uh, master availability if master is very busy then your initiation going to be later but if she is less busy then it's quicker for you to get initiation after that then after that is full initiation meaning light meditation and sound meditation and uh, from ichwa puriji according to uh, great master the one thing ji um he usually uh, get half initiation to children right mm-hmm. and uh, uh, half initiation usually be on the sound for children because uh, children doesn't have busy mind yet so they doesn't need to recite the holy name to clear up their mind like adults so a lot of time um great master will give initiation uh sound on the sound first to the children and later on when they grow up then give full initiation meaning teaching the light method teaching the names the holy names or symbols to them 
but is not uh, always that standard. Sometimes a uh, perfect living master can give um, half initiation um, on, on the light first as well to children. So this thing is like case by case. But I already explained the logical way to you why, you know, when children uh, came because the parents asking for initiation for them, usually master, even in Supreme Master group, they initiate, uh, they do half initiation on the south first for all the children. And later on, they when they reach uh, a certain age that, uh, you know, that master expecting to, in each uh, group of master, then they can come back to get full initiation. Now, what actually happened is a, a half initiation is the same as initiation. I would say yes, because master already accept them as disciple. So their sin chit karma, their collective karma, has been removed, leave them the destiny karma of this lifetime to fulfill, and also leave the uh, new karma for them to take care as well. So um, I would say the collective karma from the past life and from the future life that they're going to have has been removed even if it is half initiation. Because promise from master that accept uh, uh, um, them as disciple, promise is promise, there's no half promise. Inside, master will have to manifest the inner master inside each and every one of the disciple. So on that basis, initiation is initiation. But it's just in the formality in this world that sometimes master giving half initiation because the learning capacity still not there. They still have to clear up something and later on they can get a full initiation. Now, sometimes perfect living master can give um, half initiation for adult as well only because they cannot follow the requirement that master are. For example, they ask master, okay, master, I can become a vegetarian, but uh, can I still have eggs? Can I still have cow milk, goat milk, right? Can I like slowly progressing there to be fully vegetarian or vegan? Mm -hmm. Then master will say, okay, then I give you half initiation. You can come back to me when you, you know, fully commit to this uh, diet. It's not because that person is not good enough, but sometimes master uh, don't want to, don't want them to progress too quickly. Otherwise, it's gonna be too shock for them to change or for the people around them, that they suddenly change. And sometimes, it's not diet reason even. It's the reason of karma. That master see that, oh, if master give this person initiation this day, um, maybe some dramatic um, accident or dramatic event going to happen for this person. Then master just simply say, okay, I'm going to teach you a meditation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's equal as a uh, half initiation already. Right? Why? Because each and every time, perfect living master asking you to do meditation behind the physical eye at the wisdom eye center. Each time they're doing that, they activate your eye chakra your wisdom eye chakra. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those people will see the radiant form, the manifestation of the inner master when they reach their wisdom eye chakra. 
So when that's happening without full initiation, it's considered half initiation. I think some people will be just curious to understand the difference between the two. Um, mm. But for master, half initiation or full initiation, it doesn't matter because they already see that you are mark soul. Mm. And on that basis, they give you full initiation or half initiation. But they already recognize that you are the mark soul. They already recognize you as their disciple. Okay. Whether you on uh, their list A or list B, they give you initiation. Okay, one question with regards to initiation: Can a master initiate you um, without letting you know that you are initiated? Yes, that that's possible because that's a story of uh, a guy, right? That um, he happened to know the name. Obaba Sawanzi, the great master from his friend. And this guy was very poor and lived in very remote village. But because he had a dream where he saw great master in his dream, so he cannot forget about that. So he tried to walk from his village because he didn't have bus fare to the Dera Bias. And, uh, uh, and after that, a uh, uh, month after that, he reached the Dera. And at that time, Ishwa Puriji was with a uh, great master, seeing this man arriving, right? And the man asking great ma uh, master, please initiate me and bow down to great master's feet. And great master said, what? Uh, again? Right? So everybody just puzzled. Why master say that? Uh, um, again, right? Meaning, why you need initiation again? Then great master go on and explain that. Before you leave the village, I already initiate you. But for the formality, tomorrow, you can learn the, the meditation method. So sometimes, by affinity because master is omnipresent omnipotent right because they everywhere right and they are powerful so sometimes they can go into your dream and and initiate you and there's another case as well this this case is quite fun okay so uh, during that time, there was uh, a war between Pakistan and, and India. So Pakistan wants to bomb some of the water source in Punjab because they see that Punjab is big um, food, uh, food producer area. So they want to bomb the dam, the river in Punjab. So therefore, they sent five planes with bombs. We we'll try to bomb, and on the list, including the river Bihar. So on that day, great master giving the sub sign mm -hmm. near the river bank, and um, suddenly he stopped giving the sub sign and stand up. And saying, oh, wait a minute, right? Just wait. And he just stand up. He just walk and uh, stand on a bridge of the river Bias. Suddenly, people saw the plane coming and start dumping bombs on the bridge. And then Great Master just um, simply wave his hand up in the air and the bomb is just instead of going down, it's just going up and you know, and explode above the plane. So the pilot, right, the, the head of the group of these uh, pilots get really puzzled, right? Why? What is happening? 
maybe there's something wrong with the bomb, you know, mm. that is doing that way. So he instructs the next plane. Okay, next one, you know, drop the bomb. So the second bomb also come down and try to drop the bomb. And then master look up, you know, and try to wave his hand again. So the bomb again going up in the sky and explode. And then this, um, the head, the, the, um, he's quite uh, higher up in the army because he's the leader of the group. He just think of himself, wait a minute, why that white man with the white beard standing uh, on the bridge and he has some kind of uh, power that seemed that, that uh, stopped the bomb. So he must be a holy man because this man is a religious man. He believes in Allah. Mm. He is Islam. And he just start to think about the prophet. Mm. And he just think, oh my God, maybe he is the prophet. Mm -hmm. So I should not doing this. So something in him telling that, oh, this is a holy man. Should not mess <laughs> with this area. Yeah. Right? So he said to all of his underling, saying that, okay, we're going to return to the base in Afghanistan. We, do it, we retreat the mission. But as the mission fell, the, um, the head of the army get very upset. You know, the head of the... What, what they call the Sky Army? What they call? Air Force. Um, yeah, the Air Force. Get very upset. And say like, right, this man, um, you know, violate the mission. Mm -hmm. the, and the mission is failing. And he's just talking nonsense. You know, why he retreat his uh, mission. Because of this holy man. They get very upset and angry. So they order him to be uh, to be shot you know like five squad yeah. the next morning right mm -hmm. so they take this man to the jail and lock him up and saying like we're gonna kill you in the morning tomorrow at sunrise the man still you know very impressed of what he's feeling about that white man on the bridge with turban and white beard. So he cannot sleep. He keeps contemplate on it, thinking about it, right? And then uh, suddenly, uh, a white man, you know, like in a white dress, an Indian man in a white dress with white beard and white turban, a player in his cell. Mm -hmm. And saying that, you won't die tomorrow. I am so and so. So if you survive tomorrow, then please come to see me in the earth and just disappear. Then the man just be very amazed, like, is that a vision? That's a, uh, is it my mind tricking me? What happened? Right? And then the next morning, because during the night, the, the head of the army, meaning like uh, the one that controlled uh, the, uh, the four, what is it, army, air force, uh, navy, and other things, right? The, the higher up, yeah, the general, okay, come to know about this uh, story. And the general also happened to believe in Allah and the prophet. And in his heart, he's just thinking, I should let this man go, the general. Yeah, because this is so like significant uh, event, you know, and, and the general believe in miracle. Okay. So uh, the general told the head of the air force saying that, okay, we won't kill this man. But we will take all the position, the house, the money away from him, right? But we're going to release him. 
So in the morning, the God come and say to the man, "Congratulation! You know you won't die today." There's a, a order from higher up mm-hmm. saying that they release you, but um, because you still um, we gonna still punish something, you know, you have to still go through the punishment. So therefore, everything will be taken away from you. So the man, you know, was very impressed. So he cannot uh, stop thinking about uh, the Indian man with the white beard and the white turban. So he do like kind of hitchhiking from Afghanistan and try to cross the border to come to be us. And it uh, take a long time to come and arrive in um, in Bias Dera. So when on that day he arrived in Bias Dera, master great master doing the sun sign. Okay. And when the man arrived, master talking about you know, even you know people that had been kill other people, like people who work in the in the army, also can be forgiven. If they sincerely repent, they can come and study about the higher truth with me. And upon hearing that, the man just, you know, like um, kneel down on the floor and start to cry very hard until the satsang finished. And then after the satsang finished, uh, great master saw him, you know, like crying very heavily on the ground and just ask the close devada to fetch, fetch this man, to bring him to me. And the man start to say his story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So great master said, okay, then you can stay in the Dera. And as you already been initiated that night in the cell, then tomorrow, um, I'm going to teach you how to meditate. Wow. Mm. So this is one of the examples that, yes, Master can use affinity to help anyone, even a sinner. He just go there, you know, and, and help his mark soul. Even in the, in the worst situation, they still rescue, giving initiation, bring that person to them in the physical form, right? So when the physical form meet one another, then you can learn how to meditate, how to practice properly. But initiation can happen anywhere, in any circumstances. Okay, main speaker, um, I have another question with regards to initiation. So for example, um, if you are a seeker and you are truly... um, very into the spiritual path and you then get initiated by more than one master for example i know some people are initiated with three masters or even four what is the implication of that initiation and how how does it work then or which uh, uh, which level will you be brought to or are you are you going to be confused because you have like four masters and they probably might come from different levels. Right. Okay, as for myself, I'm initiated from three masters. I can um, tell a little bit about my own experience. From my experience, right, I start off from uh, getting initiation from Supreme Master Xinghai, and after that, I get initiation from uh, Ishwa Puriji and Baba Gurinda Singhji later. So I'm initiated from three master. So what happened is that because I feel the call from the master, three master equally. And uh, I would say that, you know, the last two master, um, Baba Ji and Ishwa Ji, really pulling me very strongly. They are the one, right? Just like only they are at that moment the perfect master 
and the one and only for me. Why I feel that? Because I, you know, ultimately, Master is the sound current. Master is the shepherd. The true form of Master is the Master power. When you connect with that Master power, it doesn't matter if it manifests into an Indian man, a Chinese lady, a Vietnamese lady, right, or a Thai lady, right? It's, you pick up the same, you pick up the pulling, feeling the same. So, but our mind tends to analyze that. Okay, we have um, many masters to pray for now. So which one we should, uh, you know, pray to at that moment? It's not like that. The darshan of the master or the blessing or the grace of the master is not in our hand, as Babaji said. You have to do your part, you have to clear your mind, you have to be still. And after you being completely still, then Master can come. And whoever is showing to you at that moment is the representative of the highest power that manifests into the radiant form and communicating with you. Do you understand what I say? Mm -hmm. Now, I have a Chinese friend where he said that I initiate from Nai Master. I was very surprised hearing that. Then, you know, uh, in the beginning, I was having the same question. Who actually he, um, he uh, you know, pray for? Who actually he connect inside? Because mm. he's have more choices than me, right? Yeah. For me, in the beginning, I try to manage and try to understand, right? But for him, it must be confusing. Especially, you know, sometimes when you're on the spiritual path, you not uh, always start with a perfect living master. You start to get initiation from master or the guru of the first level, uh, the guru from the astral level, you start to get um, initiation from the guru of the second level, level, the causal level, or you maybe you know like have affinity with third guru, you know start with the D, right? The third level guru. So sometimes those uh, you have to earn merit that way, to progressing to these uh, part of the truth. Then eventually, as you practice to go inside, as instructed by every guru, then you progressing inside and try to find higher and higher truth for yourself. And ultimately, that will lead you to a perfect living master, meaning the master from the fifth level, the Satguru with the T, right? Satguru, right? Mm -hmm. And he said to me, I, I just asked him, like jokingly, this uh, Chinese man, like, oh, then who is your favorite one? He said, from my own experience, Ishwa Puriji is the best. It's the best of them all. And I just said, why are you saying that? He said, because uh, he pulling me the most. He's my final guru. I uh, have been searching for the high, highest truth and I have not been satisfied with any master until I met with Ishwa Puriji. So, you know, he's the one who brought the highest truth to me and explained to me very clearly in the way that it makes um, logical sense in my mind that's with my mind and that love of the master of Ishwa Puriji win my mind. Before that, um, my mind could not be satisfied with other master. That's why I continue searching. That's it for today's satsang. Thank you, main speaker, for spending time with us for this satsang. If you want more information about Easter Asia, 
please go to www.istaasia.com. You may also subscribe to our newsletter or email us any inquiries you may have regarding spirituality. Thank you for listening.